It's Bears Eagles and welcome into Bears Game Preview Week 15 version. I'm Jeff Joniak, my broadcast partner from News Radio 1059 WBBM, Mr. Tom Thayer. What a matchup for the Bears. What a four pack of games to end this 2022 regular season. As we take a look at this matchup, Tom, I've tried many different ways to find out how to slow down uh, an Eagles team that's been tuning everybody up in the league. They've lost just once to Ron Rivera's Washington Commanders. And the line of scrimmage is where they dominate offensively and defensively. Tom, how do you beat the Philadelphia Eagles? You know, you have to disrupt their timing. You have to disrupt their rhythm and their flow. They have a lot of pre-snap movement and evaluation of their coverages that they're going to be faced with. So on both sides of the ball, if the offensive line can sustain protection and the defensive line can put pressure on the opponent's quarterback, you're going to have to disrupt that rhythm. Don't allow them to fall into a comfort zone where they, you know, be able to evaluate what your coverage is and then take advantage of it. I'll tell you what, Nick Sirianni's team has uh, so much balance right down to the play selection. It's about 50-50 run pass. You think of this team as just an RPO team with Jalen Hurts running the show. He's having an MVP season, but he's triggering from the pocket. He's patient. If the if you're looking at man coverage, he's taking off and getting big chunks of yards. He is not taking big hits. He is scoring touchdowns, 10 this season on the ground. Only quarterback in the Super Bowl era with back-to-back 10 touchdown seasons. And then he's got Miles Sanders to worry about. So from a Bears defensive point of view, you really got to hammer down the run game at a minimum because if that gets going and they get you off balance, then they're going to A.J. Brown. They're going to Devontae. I mean, they've got every – they got Dallas Goddard possibly coming back. He was having a Pro Bowl start to his season at tight end. Yeah, but now you're talking about two different elements. Can Jack Sanborn and Nicholas Morrow and the rest of the linebacking crew, can they team up with the defensive line to slow that running game down? Whether it's straight handoffs to Miles Sanders or an RPO game. That's why it's hard to determine the analytics of this game because they make those decisions on a moment's notice. So then you got the linebackers that need to play the best football that they played up until this point. Then you have the responsibility of the defensive backs if they decide to go with the P of the RPO, because now they do have a bunch of good receivers they have to cover, but the Bears have been able to develop a lot of different players. They've been able to develop depth. So now they have a number of different combinations of type of coverage um, packages that they can put out there. So now it is going to be about all three phases kind of matching up with each other, the defensive line complementing the linebackers, and then the defensive backs having their own responsibilities. It's a young secondary for the Bears. They got five rookies to choose from, including the returns of Jaquan Brisker at strong safety and Cotter Gordon at the nickel position. Big assignments indeed. And let's not, we always seem to forget about Jalen Johnson's responsibilities here, Tom. Uh, he's got uh, quite the selection. He's got. He's already faced some really good receivers this year. He's got two in this week. He's got Stephon Diggs next week. He's got Justin Jefferson coming down the pipe. So a big challenge for Jalen Johnson to really be a shutdown corner and have these other guys blend back in after missing two games. Any concerns? You know, it's kind of funny, though, because you bring up the amount of rookies that are playing and part of the defensive backfield. Jalen Johnson, definitely, he is the leader of the defensive backfield at this point. But I don't even consider Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon rookies anymore because, you know, since the moment they got drafted, they were anointed starters. They took a stronghold on the position and they've never given it up. And then you talk about the other guys that were used in the the Green Bay game. They did a really nice job. So I think the experience that Jaquan and Kyler have gotten to this point, you almost consider them veterans because they played so much football. But it is going to be about the scheming by Allen Williams. How do you complement the defensive backfield with what you got up front? But now I think that you can put a number of defensive backs out there that you can clog the passing lanes. And that's what I'm interested to see, how they use all the talent that they've been able to develop. By the way, on the coach's show on Monday night on WBBM, I brought this whole thing up. But yeah, these guys are no longer rookies. And Matt Eberflus correctly pointed out, he goes with the veteran approach. Week three of next season, they will officially be veterans. That's kind of the, the theme for the NFL. But, you know, these guys have been playing like veterans all season long. All right, let's talk about the Bears offense because it is it is scoring points. I, I love what the, the, the passing game developing and how Justin Fields threw against the Green Bay Packers. Hopefully that continues. What is Justin Fields looking at here? 
he presents a different concern for the defensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles. You've got, got to be concerned with the receivers on the outside because of the, the size that the Bears offer you. And then you have to see what J Justin is going to do from inside the pocket, considering what he was able to do against the Green Bay Packers. He was able to stay inside the pocket, do a quality evaluation, throw passes at distance or some underneath checkdowns. Now, Dave Montgomery, he may need to have to stand in there before he goes out for those checkdown routes and be a pass protector for Justin Fields. You always got to be concerned about his, his explosiveness. And then Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, has done a nice job all season of putting together a formula of pass protection for his offensive line. They did a really nice job against the Green Bay Packers. Now that's got to, to continue to the Philadelphia Eagles. And I know you're talking about a number of defensive linemen they can offer you, but they can only play four or five at a time. Do you feel the Bears can run the ball on these guys? Bears are looking at uh, trying to be one of just six teams in NFL history to get 3,000 yards rushing in a season. Uh, your team uh, did it once as well. Uh, that would be a great honor, great honor to beat the the record of 2019, the Baltimore Ravens, and get the overall number of rushing yards in a single season. I'd rather have wins, of course, and so would the Bears. However, can they run the ball? This is an Eagles team that early in the season did have some issues with that, but they've gotten considerably better here in the last several weeks. Well, the Bears have to match physical with fatigue. You can be a physical running game with David Montgomery. He's the type of guy that if you get him to the second level, he can add an extra three yards to every one of his carries. And then you got the portion that Justin Fields offers you. If you get a defender out of position, if you get a defender trying to guess where he's supposed to be before the snap is made, then Justin's gonna make you pay. You, you heard it in your description of when he got defenders in a trailing position against Green Bay, they're not gonna catch him. So it is the two elements that the Bears running game can offer you, and that's what they're gonna have to use against this talented defense. All right, let's take a look at some players to watch on each side of the ball. I'm gonna start with you on offense. Where are you going? I'm gonna go with big play wide receivers um, because I need chunk yards. I need players to be able to get passes. And to me, it's gonna be EQ St. Brown. I think that he and Justin have been able to develop a nice relationship that if Justin has provided the protection, he can put the ball into a place where EQ is starting to understand Justin's long distance capabilities. I'm gonna go with, I mean, I, I hate to keep doing this because it sounds like a broken record, but I gotta go with Cole Komet. Oh my God. I know, I gotta go with Cole Komet. Cole Komet, four first down, season high in his last game against the Green Bay Packers. I love how he's playing. I love the chemistry that's brewing with him and Justin Fields. Obviously, they're going to need him as an inline blocker as well, and he's done a great job of that, takes great pride in that. I'm looking for, for 85. I just think he's off to a, a great stretch here over the last six games. All right, how about on defense? I'm going to go with Justin Jones because if you're going to make this offense dysfunctional and you're going to make immediate decisions by the quarterback either handing off or throwing the ball, it's going to be because he sees opposite color jersey. And the guy that can penetrate the quickest and the closest position to the quarterback is Justin Jones. I'm going to go with Jalen Johnson. I brought him up earlier in the show, and Jalen, uh, just one interception in his career. I think that something comes into the Cats' web. He's going, he's going after it, and that's the way the Bears have to play against Philadelphia. They got nothing to lose here. So, Jalen, you know, got to shut down, take away at least one of the options that Jalen Hurts has and keep your eyes on that quarterback and make plays on the football in this football game. All right, well... Limit three and outs, don't turn the ball over, take the ball away, run the ball, keep that offense off the field, dominate the time of possession, and let's score some touchdowns, Big Tom. How about it? Hey, you can't have field goals in this game, Jeff. You have to have touchdowns. All right, I didn't know you had a little Santa in you. Nice treat. I like it. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho. That's going to wrap us up for our game preview. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Join us on the radio on News Radio 1059 WBBM with our 9 a.m. pregame and the noon kickoff. We'll see you then and talk to you on the radio. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching.